I do want to point out, by the way, that all this criticism is just leveled at the film. I bear no ill will towards people who might enjoy the film. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I don't want to go illegal. with the whole "oh, you just consume product." If if you if you like the film, if you enjoy the film, good for you. If you think the film is beautiful and innovative, good for you. Anyways, legal disclaimer yeah. out of the way. Let's go back. Uh, no. Uh... Good thing to do the legal disclaimer after two hours of renting. It's it's fine. I'll oh. I'll add this at the beginning. I'll edit yeah. this in the start. Edit this in before the part where you fucked up the recording. What? I did no such thing. Hello, podcasters, and welcome to another episode of your favorite, very. Uh, fuck, I've already forgotten what I said. Um, <laughs> very frequent de uploading very, podcast. Very regular, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, podcasters, and welcome to another episode of your favorite very regularly uploading podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Armin. Hello. And special guest, Rick Raptor. Hello. We've got Armin. We've got Rick. <laughs> Jurassic World 3 dropped. Let's fucking do this. Um, oh my god. This is audio only, so if you're what chilled out and bought the YouTube version on your phone, or if you're watching this in the theaters. Um I came up with that joke. That's my joke. Um, yes, it's definitely your joke. There's yeah, no yeah, audio there is. proving this the opposite of this. Uh yeah. Because so <laughs> audio only, just listen to us. And uh first few minutes of this discussion will be spoiler free. So yeah. Um, initial thoughts. What did what was everyone's initial thoughts of this film? Okay, but the initial thoughts. When I saw it on my own without any knowing about any discourse, I just thought, well, I didn't hate it as much as Fallen Kingdom, but it still felt very rushed, and I, I was more like, meh. I I don't know. I no longer care. I'm indifferent. It's only after I saw comments by other people and then re-watching it for the podcast that I realized, okay, yeah, at least Fallen Kingdom was a movie. This isn't even a movie. Yeah, that mm. sums it up pretty well. Uh, we watched it together, Caro, so yeah. you know what I thought. Uh, I thought it was was a goddamn mess. Um, like, what immediately struck me was that the characters just didn't feel like themselves. They felt like shallow copies of themselves trying mm. to reenact the previous movies i thought the pacing was all over the place like the first half was okay-ish pace and then we just go into a clip show with a nonsensical ending and it really concludes jack shit so <laughs> i'm glad we're keeping that up yeah i think much the same as armin um and Rick as well in different ways. I think yeah, it's it's very much. I I I was very vocal about it. I don't think this is really a movie. It's it's very much a clip show. Um, any attempts at a plot are quickly thrown away. Very much in when you start getting into any action. Uh, characters terrible. I thought the dialogue was forgettable at best. Actually, I would say no. It was overall forgettable. I can't remember a single line from this. Other than the I ones. wrote down a couple I'm, of words that I remember. I'm sure they say life finds a way at least once. I don't. I don't no, no, they don't. See, this they is an say what film, a lot. No callbacks. There, there's, there was a surprising amount of times where somebody said either something that was a joke or some ominous star line, <laughs> and another person replied just what? <laughs> <laughs> Rewatch <laughs> it. It happens. It happens more often than you think that somebody just replies oh. what. Okay. What? Yeah, my reaction as well, Armin. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did come out of this thinking though, huh? I did not mind the dinosaurs at all, or yeah, I didn't mind the dinosaurs yeah. for the most uh, part. Uh, there isn't the... that much dinosaur in this compared to how many there are. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. it's full of Jurassic World discourse is always like obviously the science, um tend to get disproportionate yeah. attention early on because it's I, the only yeah. thing you can judge before the movie comes out. Yeah, yeah. Like I would not go, the accuracy I wouldn't go, oh, even well. discuss that in this. It's, this oh, there, there's so much Yeah, there's so much about I'm, the I'm just gonna briefly touch on it. That's all. Like always you can so oh yeah promotional oh man this fucking dimension sucks ass. <laughs> like you can't say that with confidence even if the movie isn't out. 
Yeah. Ah, which yeah. kind of falls into the problem like, oh, everyone's going to, oh, no, people only hate Jurassic World for the designs. No, obviously they are most talked about because like, it's the easiest, most accessible thing. But what makes the movies really bad is pacing, character, storyline, writing, all that stuff. That's yeah. what yeah. really drives them to what they are. Yeah. And it's incredible to watch a movie like this and realize, oh, it can th those factors can always get worse than the previous <laughs> one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I would put this as the weakest film in the franchise overall. Oh, yeah. definitely. I disliked Fallen Kingdom, but this is worse. The whole trilogy just reminds me so much of how the Star Wars sequels went. Where it's yeah. like, oh, the first one is the big nostalgia opening, everybody loves it, then after a few years, when you think about it, well, there was really nothing original in that first one. The second one does the weird thing where many people are turning on it. And then now the third one, even though Rise of Skywalker was like more nostalgia bait than this one, I, it, I, ironically, I feel like both still have in common that there's just way too much stuff happening that is super rushed and awful pacing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like you said, the last two firsts feel like a clip show. Which really fits well with Rise of Skywalker's rushed, weird uh, planet jumping. Yeah, um... dinosaur set piece jumping is the equivalent to planet jumping. <laughs> True. Yeah, basically. Uh, what's it called? Uh, um, oh. oh god! Why? Well, I guess a wild goose chase. No, no, that's not really it. But I've, it that's really gets close quiet. enough, I think. I mean, yeah. Also, like Rise of Skywalker had mo multiple MacGuffins, and this one also had like multiple MacGuffins when you think about it, but I think at that point we're getting into the plot, so I don't know. Catastrophic use of MacGuffins, though. Yeah. Scavenger but... Hunt. Yes. Scavenger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rise of Skywalker Scavenger Hunt felt very similar to weird dinosaur jumping in, uh, in Dominion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, should we move into I spoilers? I think so, yeah. I don't think there's... Like we said, there's not much more to say. Hypothetically, we could discuss without spoiling much the dinosaur designs, but that's not really why we're here. No, yeah. that That's no longer the, the problem with the <laughs> film. If you just want to see dinosaurs doing action stuff, I guess I would... I See, I, I don't even know if I would I recommend... Yeah. Yeah, because Fallen Kingdom had more action scenes or like more, more exciting set pieces. This one... Right, There's yeah, so let's, much... let's, let's use that as yeah. our segue into spoilers. So spoilers from here on out, guys. If you haven't watched the film and want to go in without spoilers, don't watch this. Yeah. Um, Ian Malcolm dies. Not even dead. I, I, <laughs> that would have been... So, if he died, I would have been fine with that. I would, because yeah. I felt like he, yeah, he was the most cynical character in like the... Or at least in Lost World, he was super cynical. I, I would be fine with him Honestly, dying. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, how do we do we start at the beginning of the movie, which was not the prologue, even though the prologue feels Ooh, true. like the I think now that you now that you mentioned it, yeah, let's start there. Yeah. Why the fuck was the prologue not in this movie? God, it's so weird. Like, okay, it's going around to Rise of Skywalker. It's one thing to have a pivotal plot point not in the <laughs> movie because you make it later. Like, it's 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 terrible. That's a Stupid fucking idea. Why didn't we find out the exact origin of Ray in the movie? Why do we have to read a book for that? Like, even I, who's a very much Star Wars book defender, think this is stupid. But it's even dumber when you already have the plot set up for the climax, and then you just don't bother including it? I mean, I just realized, you know how in Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine's <laughs> speech was just a Fortnite message and not in the movie itself? <laughs> yeah. The prologue being a YouTube video is the equivalent to that. Basically, yeah. It, it is literally just somehow Giganotosaurus return. Yeah, yeah. because like, without the prologue, the climax has no stakes. Like, yeah. the whole thing. When the prologue came out, we were like, oh yeah, uh, obviously the t was killed by the Giga, so they can have the battle at the end. Yeah. And by removing it, they just... Wow. Nothing makes sense. Yeah. Like, yes, most people are gonna watch it, but it should still be in the movie if you already have it beforehand. Yeah. And it's also, like, the second part of the prologue with the T-Rex at the uh, uh, yeah. um, drive-in. That's, like, the part of the movie I was looking forward to the most was, oh, dinosaurs interacting with people. 
and that's only like the first 20 minutes and then most of the movie is them again being in a big enclosure where somebody wants to do something with them and yeah I like what Dragon Funders tweeted where it was like the enclosure in the mountains it's just the same as having them on an island yeah basically yeah. Like right down to like keeping everything uh, in the with like oh the air security system or whatever. But hey, at least we get yeah, dinosaurs like, on the mainland in Malta. Oh wait, yeah, that that's yeah. yeah. I mean even then, just... like you, like we have dinosaurs in the wild in the first fifty minutes. Yeah, mm, I, I mean, hate... not really. We have okay, we have the scene with the mosasaur and we have the sauropods and that's it. And I guess the ceratops scenes on the farm, but like I mean, other the, than the that, the parasaurolophus uh... in the for. I mean, see, I also, yeah, I remember when the trailer came out and you saw the shot with the Paris of Olympus with the horses and you see the Quetzalcoatlus with the World Trade Center. I was like, okay, these shots are either from the beginning of the movie or of the end. And then they are from both because this movie st starts, uh, stops the same way it ended. It's just, oh, yeah, and there's some dinosaurs now in our world. Like, th the whole movie was so pointless. Yeah. In... It, it does that thing that franchise films will do where they'll just introduce a new plot point that has really no bearing with anything that's been set up beforehand or the, the thinnest of bearings that's really brought out of nowhere and then resolve that without addressing any of the actual overarching plot points. Yeah. And like, also where it's like the previous movie had such an interesting conclusion or hook for the next one but yeah. then because the next one is several years later oh there's a time skip and all that interesting stuff mostly already happened off screen yeah yeah we it's like you get teased of oh gangsters now have dinosaurs everyone has dinosaurs but like <laughs> we only get to see like three instances of that really like the black market okay um the the farm both of which are just Really short, but all things considered. And then the fact that Biosyn exists. And they yeah. just have an island, except it's cold. Yeah. Um, I, want, I think before getting into the plot, however, starting from there, obviously the plot happens, I think it would be nice to talk more generally about the dinosaurs just to get that out of the way, since they really have no connection to the plot. Like, Oh, absolutely. The actual um, action scenes, I think, are... Some of the weakest the franchise has offered as well. Yeah. Also, like, and some I of felt the there were several Yeah, short. Like, the the cats are quite the scene. Somebody posted to YouTube, it's 15 seconds. Because it's literally just what you see in the trailer. It shows up, yeah. scratches the plane, and leaves. It refuses to elaborate. That's it. Chat, pets are quite yeah, and oh, yet but, but they, yeah. they name drop it. Like, that's also, like, a weird thing that I noticed with this movie. Yeah. It name drops the wrong dinosaurs, like the Dreadnoughtus and the Quetzalcoatlus, but not the fairy dinosaurs, which will later become very important to the movie. Yeah. A lot, uh, they name drop the atrocities, don't they? Yes, they yeah. do. Yeah, they do. They do. I was surprisingly Which... okay with the atrocity raptors themselves, but again, I guess that's in context. Uh, yeah, because no, I did again. not like that they brought back the the laser pointer thing. I oh feel my like God. the only reason they Whoa. the only reason they have this laser pointer Whoa. thing is so they have an excuse why these raptors will continue to brutally chase Owen and Claire specifically, and why they wouldn't just abandon them at any point. It's just an excuse. Why are these raptors so vicious? Oh well, because we used the laser pointer thing that we had in the previous movie. And again, even though there's no more military stuff, you you still bring that part back. Yeah. I think of the atrocities, though, it's like, maybe it's just the idea, but, like, I assume they play, like, a decently big role, like, oh, they are the anti-raptor pack, yeah. they are, like, blue no. and her gang, but even they individual in names. one scene on Malta, and then they're never brought up again. Like, yeah. everything in this movie, they exist in a vacuum. See, at least the raptor squad in the first Jurassic World movie, their names were mentioned in the movie, when Owen has them, like, oh, blue and, uh... Charlie and Delta and Echo, at you, least he name you, drops them. You don't once need to name drop them in the film to sell toys anymore. Yeah. It's a thing. Apart from the, 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 the ghost one, I couldn't really tell them apart, but that could also be because of the quality yeah. at which I saw them. Yeah. So I will not comment on that. The laser. Why <laughs> Why did they bring back the laser pointer? Yeah, I that, mean, we should. I, yeah. I get. 
I think that's I'm, like I'm let, I, I can that. only think okay. Well, Colin Trevorrow wrote wrote parts of Fallen Kingdom. He wrote parts of this, so I feel like oh, the laser pointer thing is is his it's, specific it's his, idea. His thing, it's true. Yeah. I thought. Also, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Do we want to continue with the dinosaurs? Because, well, not dinosaur, but the mosasaur has been wasted by his entire franchise. Yeah. In in the in Fallen Kingdom, the very first scene with the Mosasaur, at least it's a nice build up, but then you don't see it again until the montage at the end. And here they do this again, but except the scene at the beginning is also just part of a montage, and then you have a montage at the end of it, and they don't do anything with it. Yeah, I love how we have a blue sail, a blue whale sized giant lizard roaming the oceans, causing havoc, and it's not even as much as a footnote. Because at the end of the movie, they show he's not causing havoc. He, she's living in peace with the whales, even though in every previous scene she was eating whatever she could. No. no he, he only kills sharks, obviously. Yeah. The Therizinosaur scene as well, so short. I was really looking forward to that, I'll be honest. The first one? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's nothing more than the trailer shots again. I mean, it gets a cool introduction where it kills the deer. Like, I was like, okay. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, but yeah. again, it's like one of those things. Like, oh yeah, um, okay. But actually, I didn't say this so far. Like, I think as my favorite moments go, I don't have any favorite moments per se. No favorite scenes. I just have like favorite five seconds clips, which are then favorite ruined friends. by how the scene continues. Yeah, I yeah, I like the I like this is like the first time we actually have like an aggressive Gary Herbivore in Jurassic Park or yeah. World. No. Like I but, like that. It's scary. I like it yeah. how it eats deer. And then I think it's uh, fucking ruined by how stupid it acts for going after Claire. Which I, yeah, oh. I, oh my it's god. Like I I could I could not tell. Okay, is it just trying to go into the general direction? Does it know she's there? Why is it going so slow? And uh, is it Claire... blind? Yeah, I mean the, the eyes looked like it was blind, but if it's blind then the climax doesn't really make sense. <laughs> I I will say I think the whole fairy slowly ambling after Claire for no reason is a greater issue with the whole film because yeah. it pissed me off because the Giga does that as well in its first action scene. Well, sorry, second yeah. action scene because I keep forgetting it tips off with the Rex. Yeah, and because again, one and a half hours in, they had to make sure that at least they had some setup for the Giga, which they would have had if they had. Yeah, the, but it's it's a dumb prologue. setup because you just you're setting up already. It's that whole thing where you set it up. But also fully reveal it at the same time early on, so you lose that. Yeah. Like I, I would have assumed its introduction in the present, because obviously I assumed the prologue would be in, would have been a emerging from the smoke and the fire and all that. But no, yeah, it okay, just yeah. wanders it's, up. It's too, yeah. They, because yeah, think about it. this movie has the same line twice because Kayla says, "Oh, it's Giganotosaurus, the largest carnivore the world has ever seen." <laughs> and then when it shows up at the end, Grant again, "Oh, it's Giganotosaurus, the largest carnivore the world has ever seen." Also, they're like, compensating for the fact that it's not the largest carnivore the world has ever seen. <laughs> yeah, Spinosaurus should be happy it's not in this movie. <laughs> oh, I definitely yes. But yeah, because the Giga. Anyway, going back to the action, the Giga does the same thing. We're just sort of like. Jauntily, not even jauntily, just slowly walks around the car for yeah, no reason. Yeah, I could it's... not tell. Yeah, if it doesn't see them or it's, it's not interested in actually them. chasing them. Yeah, because they are moving it. They are so close. You have the people and the gig in the same shot. <laughs> so I, yeah, I could not understand why was it moving so slowly. Because then you're already moving. Why are you even bothering hiding behind the car? Why is this even playing like it's suspenseful? The Giga is already seeing it and slowly going after them. No. And yeah, that scene also doesn't work because you have just too many characters. When you have six people climbing up a ladder, but the Giga tries to go after the one person who happens to be in a cage in the ladder. Yeah, well, the others just like chilling on the floor, like on the ground. Yeah, yeah. and then when they all they all suddenly get up to the top, and again, the Giga could try to get at least one of them, but they're all like neatly managing to, to get out of its range. It's a scene that doesn't work when you have six or seven. Uh, yeah. Wait, how how many people is it actually? You have the original trio. You have Maisie. You have Owen, Claire, and Kayla. That's seven people. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was surprised by how much screen time, going on the opposite from like Ferry and Fets, who just had fuck all to do in terms of screen time, ignoring I suppose the climax, but. I was surprised by how much the dialogue is in this. 
because it's an animatronic, history. so you don't yeah. have to animate. I mean, yeah, the I history. Mean, yes, I mean, but also back to Rise of Skywalker, nostalgia bait, because people have been clamoring for the dialogue for ages. Yeah. And yeah. while I think it's nice that it's back, it's really overdoing because oh, guys, dialogue for service is back. Yeah, Dodson is back. Dodson, Dodson, we've got Dodson here. Nobody cares. Especially like, because yeah. he has. N there is okay. There is no reason for Dodson to be the bad guy in this one because like there's no connection to 1993. Yeah, like, yeah, he was so generic. Yeah, enough. it could be an, any evil rich guy. Yeah, and I, I, I do like that nothing. they have. The only reason it's kind of fitting that it's Dodson is because the one dinosaur out of the billion dinosaurs in this movie that actually ends up killing him is the Dilo. Because, oh, well, the Dilo killed Nedry. Nedry was working for Dodson, so the Dilo also gets to kill Dodson. That, that's your cinematic poetry right there. Yeah, the only reason uh, it's Dodson, I feel like, is, you know, I mean, obviously, like, Biosyn is, again, one of these weirdly almost kind of yeah. overhyped things people have been begging for. Like, I, on the one hand, I kind of get, on the other hand, like, it just was really forced in in this. And mm. to be fair, Biosyn was this kind of shady company doing similar stuff to them they in the book. Yeah, like, Biosyn should not fair. have been just this one movie. They should, that's something they should have tried to bring that in in an earlier movie. Yeah. Like, in the first book, they also have already this whole thing. Oh, yeah, Biosyn, like, made a rabies vaccine, but they fucked up and set up a rabies outbreak on the plane or something. Yeah. I, I guess with Biosyn, we can talk about the, the main, about the locust plot. Yeah, let's yeah. segue into that. Yeah, I, I like, in theory, like, uh, the idea, because, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, there are real-life GMO companies like Monsanto who do, who would totally do corrupt shit like that, but it's also... They do stuff like that. People know about it, and well, the company still continues to exist. So I don't think it's fitting to make the locust plot the entire like main focus of the movie. Where it's like, oh, we have to get this sample to prove that these giant genetically engineered locusts are from the only genetic <laughs> technology um, company in the whole movie. I you gotta get a DNA sample. Does it it's not enough if you take a photo of? The giant fuck of locusts they have in the lab. Yeah, I don't even see. I didn't like. I rewatched it. I don't know when they took the sample. They t take out yeah. the giant locusts, but then they all they start flying. Took, so yeah. where, how, when did they get the sample? Why did they not just know. try to take the whole locust, cut its head off? If you can still show this giant locust is clearly the same as the one that's been ravaging all the crops. Yeah. Also, at the same time, what ma What does it matter? They can't just say, oh. No, we were just researching and trying to figure out how to destroy them. Like them having the locusts at their lab really doesn't prove jack shit when yeah. you think about it. Nah, I mean I would go the opposite and saying what uh, where else would these giant locusts come from? Because I mean, there's I no don't know. Engines is no longer around. There's no other company that could have created these giant locusts. I mean, who says they are created? That's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> they are yeah. so ridiculously also, huge. At the, same time, the same time, you say engine is gone. In the last one, you literally set up how everyone has the technology in the dinosaurs now. Okay, but in this one, they only show Biosyn. They don't they show it. Yeah, I, I get Rick's point because it's that thing of like conceptually, you understand the stakes, but there's no attempt to actually show or point out that, to the audience that these are the stakes. Like, we. We we can hypothesize that there are other ones in the world based on a line by the director about the second film. That should not be where we're getting our information from for this film. Yeah. I mean, like, if we are going by lines by the director, then <laughs> the Giga and this was the worst Joker since Jared Leto in <laughs> Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that... I, I have a slightly different opinion of the Locusts, I feel. I really like the Locusts, personally. I think... The locust scene where they're in the field and like emerges and it swarms the house. I I think that's visually one of the best moments of the film. Yeah. And I feel like actually you could have hypothetically taken your your point about how, yeah, if we prove that these companies make locusts, nothing will change and explore that further. But then you just have a different film. Like fully. Yeah. Would I have liked I to have seen like... a different film? Yes. But you know, that's not the point. <laughs> Yeah, would have much rather watched Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. I'm a yeah. writer, Carol. <laughs> Armin, I, I will think... ban you live on air. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Jesus. 
Watch Morbius. I would rather watch yeah. Morbius than this, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, at least Morb Morbius is not overly complicated. Morbius is also not overly long. Yeah. It's not two and a half hours. It's yeah. 97 minutes. It's a full hour shorter than this. Yeah. So, um, how do we continue from the locusts? Do we continue I mean, how well, they we have... affect the end with have... Maisie? No, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Okay. okay. You, you go Maisie, I go forest fire, because I have words ah, about the forest okay. fire. I don't I just... understand how... I, I was re sure. The reason I'm late today is because after making myself dinner, I had to rewatch that one scene twice to figure out what happened. I, yeah, I don't know. I, they didn't break out. Some, but, like, wait, wait, wait. They, I will explain just, exactly what happened. Yeah. I, I, there's one okay. line. We'll briefly Please. bring up something about the locusts before we oh, continue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the locusts are concerned, um, I, I don't think it's fits. Uh, it's very quietness, which is great. Yeah. But like, it's so disconnected from everything. Like, on the one hand, they take up weirdly much part of the plot, where like the dinosaurs mm. are just an obstacle to overcome. Yeah. Against yeah. the uh, locust. At the same time, though, I don't think they are present enough to be a proper threat. Like we have the one scene with the barn, which would be great for a locust stream horror movie. Mm. That's fucking fantastic. And after that, they are all in captivity, and we never really deal with what the issue is. Like we only ever hear, "Oh my god, they could cause the ecological, uh, uh, everything's gonna break down, and everyone's gonna starve." But like we only ever see them at this point. Locked up in Biosyn's lab, we don't have an idea of what's going on with Lucas right I now. Mean, it would go. It really would become an even. For me. It would become an even more different movie if they made the locust like even showed the locust uh, starving apocalypse. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, but I, at the same time, like it would be different too. But at the same time, like it's all it already is. The dinosaurs are already an afterthought. So yeah. you push the dinosaurs back, but also not bothering to explore the locust fully. No. So you're just getting the worst of both worlds. You know, they should have had a dinosaur actually start eating the locusts and make it about, like, defeating, like, gene science with gene science, where the dinosaurs become, like, a help against the invasive species of the locusts. That would have been such a better conclusion. Just rele shit. release Dimorphodon. Done. Yeah. Life finds a way. <laughs> Fuck. This was actually better because they already... Oh god, I just remember, didn't they bring up that they are part Cretaceous locust? Yeah, and that's. Yeah. I feel like the only reason that line is there is because they realized, well, these genetically modified locusts feel too little like they connect with the dinosaur Jurassic Park movie. So at least have a line that they are Cretaceous locusts, even though there obviously are no giant Cretaceous locusts. And how would they even get DNA of giant Cretaceous locusts? Cretaceous locust yeah, okay. blood. Yeah. <laughs> Mosquitoes that drank locust blood. I mean, um, obviously, okay, you could I'm have a locust in Ember. Yeah. I'm gonna take back what I said about, like, there no being, being no indication that they were created in a lab. Still fucking dumb, though. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have to say about locusts. It's just, it felt like they yeah. bashed two movies together and didn't bother executing both. I mean, more one. than two <laughs> movies. Dinosaurs everywhere is one. Uh, locusts is one. The Malta Black Market was a whole another one. Yeah. Yeah. I, anyway, Akira, you want no, to explain I, before, how the locust... Before we do, no, I want, I want to go on, because we're slowly making our way up towards the locust stream. Uh, they sp explain way too late why Maisie is needed, because you have no understanding of what Wu's plan is with Maisie. Yeah. And can we also point I out that Wu's plan it. is... Because Wu's... I'll tr Wu wants to use Maisie's... Because Maisie's mother... I uh, know, yeah. Self impregnated with her own clone, yeah, to cure her own incurable disease. In no, her... no, no, no. I, I, when I rewatched okay. the movie, they said that she didn't even know about that disease when she had okay. Maisie, the baby. Okay, that's what makes it even weirder because okay, it's like then. after Maisie was already born, she managed to fix her DNA, which makes no sense. Oh, I see. Is it something like she managed to remotely rewire? Young yeah. Maisie DNA, and therefore they need to turn a locust into like a drone. Oh fuck! I do get it though. Shit, it's clever. Yeah, because locusts it's... locusts change form through through genetic signaling. That's what they do. Locusts are the product of locusts signaling each other to metamorphosize. Okay. Fuck. That is because I was looking up. Obviously, what the fuck are locusts? Locusts are, uh, like a locust is a life stage of an insect. It's when it's it's an ordinary like grasshopper like insect, 
and then depending on the season or conditions, one of them will go like supernova and become a locust, and it then sends a signal that turns all of them into locusts, and that's how swarms happen. So the idea is, I gather, Wu wants to reprogram one of the locusts to send a signal to change the other locusts, which is why he released into swarm at the end, so that they stop becoming hypercarnivorous apocalypse locusts. Not hypercarnivorous. Hypercapitalist. Hyper, hyper, hyper yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are, yes. You accident. You you just made this movie brilliant. <laughs> the locust plot. I I thought because I but thought I, yeah, there's no way you can't change the DNA of something that already exists. But if you say that's how it works with locusts, which I wasn't sure if they would even know about that when they're writing this. Man, so, I'm glad they explained that yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're normally just grasshoppers. After you have a drought followed by rapid growth, serotonin in the brains cause them to breed dramatic. Uh, to breed, and then the and then they become uh, winged adults. So it is a oh, sort of like ping-ponging sort of effect spreading throughout them. Okay. They're weird animals. They, yeah, that's really weird because I kept thinking of like the, the common trope, you know, in whenever you have like a huge army, oh, you have to just um, defeat this one thing and then the entire army is like turned off. Whether they're Roy robots or just it. monsters. Yeah, I thought this was something like that. And But if, if that's actually how locusts work, that's surprisingly smart, but I don't think they did it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, especially because the setup is, oh, well, after Maisie was already born, her mother somehow turned her DNA into being immune against diseases. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think they thought any of it actually through. Like, I... But I, they, at best, they might have just read a Wikipedia article and just went, yeah, we can... We can roll with that. Ah, uh, but they do with dinosaurs. So yeah, again. functionally. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we established they had one good idea, maybe. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> and the one good idea is the hook for a plot that's improperly executed. Yeah, Usually. because it's also not explained in the it's movie. It's not explained. Just <laughs> yeah. And, and also, like... Again, we only find out, what I was going to say is we only find out why Maisie has been kidnapped and is being used, like, an hour and a half in, at least. So we have, like, yeah. Yeah. but there's not even any proper mystery because we don't care, let's face it. And also, the big reveal is that Wu is just trying to help. Like, he kind of just tried and asked, you know, nicely. Yeah. I mean, you, that was uh, before the recording, you said you actually like Wu having a redemption. I like Wu having a redemption. I, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I think it doesn't yeah. fit with how he was in the first two Jurassic World movies, where he was just mad scientists creating dinosaurs and being like, oh, well, this is just what you wanted. See, and that's... I, <laughs> I, I, I would not say good redemption art. It has a good ignoring of the previous two films art. Yeah, yeah. And because, I like, like that, I just, because I, I hate how Wu was treated in the previous two films. So I, yeah. that's why I really like the culmination yeah. in him releasing the locust, which I think is one of yeah. the only good scenes in the film. I, yeah. But I do, like, I hate the part where he and Maisie are in the lab and he's like, oh, yeah. oh I just wa I want to fix a terrible mistake. Points that's god-awful. That is god-awful. Yeah. Because Jurassic Park and Jurassic World and the Interrupter, those were not terrible mistakes, apparently. Yeah. I, I guess I'm the centrist in this case, because, like, I conceptually enjoy the fact that there's a redemption arc, like a character does. But like Greg, I also can't say that I like it at all because it's just... It ignores the previous two movies entirely, which really doesn't fit when you have a trilogy. Like, oh, he's a bad guy. He's like this mad scientist with like no remorse in two movies. And suddenly, out of nowhere, he's, oh my god, oh... I'm, it is so bad, I have to fix it. It's, like, it's not even a, oh my god, what have I done moment. It's just like, he's suddenly... Yeah. Uh, Again, remorse. that moment has been off screen. When the movie starts with him, he already is like, "Oh my god, those locusts! What have I done?" Yeah, yeah he, like, they just they rush past it so fast. Like I love, I would love a Wood re Redemption arc, and they just don't give us it. He's just yeah. good now, and already working on like how to fix it. Yeah, I mean, like, also you don't see him emotionally <laughs> change before the first Jurassic World even came out. When it was announced, oh, they're bringing Henry Wu back. The whole time I was thinking, oh, he's only brought back so he can do what he does in the novel and just get eaten by raptors. Yeah. So that's what I was waiting for three movies, and then no, he instead gets a redemption arc <laughs> after the first two Jurassic World movies felt like the perfect setup to have him eaten by raptors. 
Yeah. True. Yeah. Surprise! So, speaking of raptors, what the fuck? So there's just like no blue in this movie, fun- functionally. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, I have I have written down. Was Colin Trevorrow never loved by his mother? Because this movie has so many <laughs> mother figures. <laughs> Holy shit, Greg. Jesus Christ. Let me, let, let, let me explain. Let me explain. No. It makes perfect sense. Oh my god, dude. So, Blue is barely in the movie. Like all Blue does in this movie, she's just, oh, the protective mother. She has a child now and wants it back. That's like her only motivation. Claire's whole thing in this movie, oh, she wants to protect Maisie, she wants to be Maisie's mother, she wants to bring Maisie back. Um, and even even Maisie's mother, so Charlotte, even though they bring up, oh, well, she just wants to do this for science, they, they make sure to mention, oh, well, she could never have a child on her own, and now she ki- finally can have a child. And the only reason they don't do this with Ellie is because that was already her character, like, in Jurassic Park 3, so, so she's past that stage. And the only other female character who doesn't want to be a mother is the black lesbian. Bisexual, first of all. Oh, yeah, right. Except they never bring it up, so who fucking... I only caught it on the rewatch. Do they actually mention it? No, she says, she says, like, when Owen is like, oh, I want to... He says something about Claire, and then uh, 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 Kayla says something like, I get it, I also like redheads. Which you can wow, even okay. interpret. Wow, they <laughs> can't even they can't even fucking spell it out. Thank yeah. you, Universal. Thank you for being such a great ally at Pride Month at that. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. I I was just gonna say I fucking called it. I fucking called it. It would either be not mentioned at all or be such a stupid throwaway line that it doesn't fucking matter. Everybody should have called it. Yeah. Like people like oh my god, people are upset about her being bisexual. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, and yeah, I just, why guys. are people upset? First of yeah. all, you're a fucking bigot. Secondly, it's not even going to be brought up that much. Not that they gave Kayla much of a character to begin with. Because fuck newcomers in this series. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess, speaking of newer characters... We have not finished are... with the Locusts. Oh, did we? Oh, yeah, right, the fire! <laughs> I forgot! But, because... like, don't we want to save it for the end when it actually happens? No. Yeah, see, I don't know in which order. Do we just go by movie order? Because then I guess we would have I to talk like... about the black market. Okay, let's talk about the black market. Uh, right, I feel like first we should uh, uh, wrap up with, like, beta and blue and that shit. Does it matter? Does anything matter? Blue beta has oh, no yeah, bearing on the plot. Okay. Say that I about have the whole four... movie wreck. Okay, I have a tiny... F- <laughs> uh, and then... Okay, so Beta is like a parthenogenetic clone. She's a yeah. literal clone of Blue. So why does she not look like Blue's baby model from Fallen Kingdom? That's a good point. Uh, less toys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they could just release the same toys. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Fair enough. That would already be what they're doing with Blue toys since the first movie, shouldn't it? <laughs> so there's yeah, no reason I'm, to just okay. release the baby blue toy and call it beta just call it blue i'm assuming it looks she looks different because she's older maybe i don't know oh i see so now because it's like a straight fucking line between young blue and normal blue yeah uh, also how much time passed between because at the start it's winter and by the time they're going back to blue it's like spring like she was spending so much time, but still waiting in that forest because she knew, oh, they will come back with my baby because I understand what these people are saying and how they operate. I don't, I don't fucking know why Blue was even in the movie. Like, okay, I've complained before. Blue is way too anthropomorphized. We really didn't need her as much, but at the same time, we have three movies and you can't just write it out. Okay, this is again, why is a Skywalker fucking rose tea that just gets written out after being a main character in the second one? Yeah. What is it with blockbusters? Just kind of like introducing characters and just removing them. Yeah. Can Can I say though, and this will take us to Malta. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite scenes from the first like act of this three act film is when Beta is magically captured by this trap, and yeah, the blue the is standing there, <laughs> and then this car slowly pulls up behind her. Bumps into her and catapults her off the edge of the cliff. That's uh, fucking hilarious. I thought the car was fast enough to knock her off. I just yeah, it's the fact that she just stands there and just yeah. waits. 
Because I'm the shot of her falling down. And, and then Malta comes along. And so many characters just spend their time falling down in Malta. Yeah. There's, an entire, like, the Jason, falling there's an entire like Jason Bourne style chase where Chris Pratt is being either chasing or being chased by the bad guys in the pit before they fall into the pit. And they're just falling down off balconies and all that shit. And then of course it goes. One guy gets on fire, which is foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, I hate that the fire thing. It, it, that felt like yeah, why? I don't know. Most of them. Yeah, I think like I like the setup down. with the black market, where you just see like people having them as as pets or in cages. And I think yeah, that's I can understand that. I can picture that being a thing in the real world. Mm. I can even picture like having baby dinosaurs fight in the pit. I cannot understand having the adults. Also down there in the black market. I assume the adults are in transit, and that Malta is like yeah. the big hotspot because of its very lucrative filming yeah. permits. And you just um, need one bullet shot to open the gates, and then they 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 walk around, they eat people inside the black market. Nobody is really reacting or running away. Chris Pratt still has time to punch the other guy in the pit while the Allosaurus is in the background. And the car is also <laughs> somewhere there. The dungeon becomes a fucking knock. <laughs> Chris Pratt tortures a guy who, who gets <laughs> both of his arms eaten, well, well, one arm literally eaten by a dinosaur, and, 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 and Owen is just standing there telling him, tell me where they are. And then when the Baryonyx uh, breaks free, Owen just stands and watches this guy get, he, he kind of executed him, because yeah. he put him into the situation he did not intervene. Yeah. Where is she? Yeah. I will say I fucking love the Lysosaurus biting down. That was that was actually great. I mean, the Lysosaurus. Yeah. Another that may, reminds me that most of the animatronics in this movie did not look Garbage. believable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, too many. Uh, I I I don't know if we will get to every scene, but the Dimetrodons was another example of they are just. You can tell that's just an animatronic standing there that cannot really do anything. No. It's it's like a haunted house. <laughs> That is very appropriate given how the scene plays out. Yeah. Yeah. That's but I wasn't sure whether it, it would felt talk like about a, it. a universal yeah. ride in waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, um, and the Malta shit. Okay, I did not even like the the evil chick because it felt I like again that's such a trope character. Oh, yeah. Why is she even there? Just also, generic. She gets away I candy stands end. in the middle, says a couple of lines. Yeah. Yeah. I I've, I've heard people praise and I don't understand why because like she practically does nothing. She stands I around. Mean, um, <laughs> yeah. She has no impact on the plot. Yeah. She's just there. Like, I'm I sure forgot, she's a fine yeah. actress and everything, but they I really don't do anything got, with yeah. her. I was, f because be obviously I did not know whether the movie had a post credit scene. It doesn't. I thought she felt like the most obvious part. Oh, and at some point they will later realize, oh, she's still around doing more dinosaur training stuff because she d she's like the only evil guy who also doesn't get comeuppance or gets eaten. Yeah. She just gets... The last time we see her, she has her hands behind her back and is like caught by um, Omar Sy's character. And Barry. Like, that's it. Yeah, Barry. We never see them again. No. We never... I mean, yeah, that's also the problem. The whole Malta plot completely disappears. There's a Carnotaurus and an Allosaurus running around in Malta. There's still three Atrociraptors running around in Malta. No, no problem. Never addressed. I, I still, I, I'm still not sure how Franklin got into the CIA. Like, I, uh, became, yeah. He, yeah. Okay, he was practically an eco terrorist. Well, like he ran around freeing dinosaurs and shit, and then he gets into the CIA. What? Is, yeah. Is that how things work? Yeah. Is he not on some sort of watch list for you know? No, the the CIA are famous for for being very very kind, ethically nice. <laughs> Good guys all round, no agenda. They had no, Lowry in the CIA. Point. The guy who in the first Jurassic World movie pressed the button to open a gate, and that's what <laughs> it. And he's now in the CIA. I very much did not clock that. Oh, oh did yeah, you? I, he had a brief cameo. Yeah, I, I okay, so looking back, I, I don't fucking remember his character. I remember his, I remember his face, and I, <laughs> and I saw the other one was also the other assistant girl, and then yeah, it was Barry, and so I thought, oh, these are all the cameos from the first Jurassic World movie. That's it. But then at least Barry actually showed up. No. Even it, I even still really think Barry should have been the main character instead of Chris Pratt. Oh well, yeah. Oh, so Especially Barry's the, the fin of this movie franchise. I mean, yeah. Yes, no, um... I don't think anybody should have been the main character in the Star Wars films, yeah. but... 
Yeah. Okay, but how about the Jurassic World films? Who should have been the main character? I, 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 I agree with Armin. Barry just makes so much more sense as a character for the... Especially the first film. The second film's also... No. But then again, the Fallen Kingdom doesn't have any side characters. Uh, it's just Chris Pratt, and so we're kind of starved for choice there. Yeah. Oh, but speaking of side characters, that's the, the thing we obviously have to mention. The way this movie works out with the old Jurassic Park trio and the new Jurassic World trio, it's very similar to Godzilla vs. Kong, yep. where you have two storylines going on. One is actually going through all the action scenes. The other ones are just sneaking around in the laboratory <laughs> to learn about something that is so obvious. Yeah. And also, yeah, both of them conveniently just end up in the same place. A lot of no knowledge. <laughs> The yeah. Malta scene has so many convenience. Like when Claire is falling from the balcony and <laughs> Kayla just happens to be there and the car there just happens to be one where the keys right there. Yeah. And then, yeah, once they uh, 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 go to the sanctuary, Claire drops with the parachute and they still manage to find her yeah. at the exact moment I, I was later. actually thinking yesterday, um, Kayla just seeing Claire on the balcony and saving her would have been a much more interesting opening to Kayla's character meeting Claire, I feel. Because then you have this moment of just altruism, like, considering Chris yeah. Pratt fucking helps nobody in this franchise, <laughs> you know, having yeah. Kayla actually just, and then that's how they meet, escaping the raptors, because then you automatically have that more of a bond. Yeah. Because I, just... I did not understand, there's no reason why when Claire meets Kayla that she immediately goes, have you seen my daughter? Have you seen this little girl? You're just a random person, but I oh ask God. whether you have seen her. It was so weird, because like, oh, uh, go into the black market and act natural. And Claire does the equivalent of yelling her daughter's name, like Jurassic yeah. Park 3. I, yeah, and I remember at first I thought, oh, this is going to be like the thing of the movie where she has to pretend that she is her daughter, and only at the end she realizes, oh, I guess we are kind of are like mother and daughter. But no, she says, I am your mother so many times that like she, already from the start, this mm. is her role. I thought this was going to be something where over the course of the film she realizes that she kind of is the adoptive mother, but not her actually slamming down her fist and saying, this is my daughter, I am her mother. None of... Yeah. I mean, there's no character development from anyone. Yeah. Like, even even Wu doesn't have character development because he set, starts out having done his internal redemption arc. It's just about proving that. Yeah. yeah. Which he does with the Locus, which we will get to. Um, <laughs> so, where, where, what is next? I mean, well, I'm, I'm well, actually, do I we do... even talk about Ellen and their adventure in Biosyn. Oh, oh, fuck oh, that. There's so little to talk about there. Yeah. Yeah, I, but I, it's honestly, most of the most screen time. I don't think they feel like Ellie and Elm. Yeah. Thinking about it, the names are really kind of confusing. <laughs> yeah, that's why you say Ellen and, no, Grant and Ellie. That's why you say it that yeah. way. Yeah, I, they just didn't feel like themselves. I don't know. They, like, it's hard to put down. It felt like a cheap imitation, a cosplay of the original characters rather than the characters themselves, which even applies to uh, fucking Chris Pratt and Claire Deering. Yeah. Hey, I care for a change. Yeah. I named her character and Chris is, uh, uh, and. <laughs> That's because Bryce Dallas hey, Howard is too long to say. Name. No, no, but Owen. we were having this conversation when we were watching the film that I remember we call him Owen. And call her Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh, that's so much <laughs> longer to say. I mean, to be yes, fair, I Claire know, Deering, because could... Claire's name is said so rarely in this film. I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even say they feel like characters cosplaying, like feel cosplaying. It feels like someone's like spin-off fan fiction. Yeah, where I mean, like the whole you just take them and Ellen place and them Ellie. in a different yeah. situation completely. There, there's so many like awkward moments between Alan and Ellie, I guess, oh, the fans want them to end up back together, but still in the movie, it, it, it feels like a bit weird. Rise like, like... of Skywalker! <laughs> in, in <laughs> it's Jurassic... a kiss, it's the Rise of Skywalker kiss, fuck me. Yeah. Like, in, in Jurassic Park 3, um, um, Ellie literally, oh, she's with another guy and has a kid with him, but Alan doesn't just stumble and mumble around while he's with her. <laughs> Then you have Malcolm, who's just completely flanderized. Like, he's... He... Oh, my God. He doesn't even Malcolm. have any good quotes in this. Oh, my God. Yeah, because he, he does, like, one speech, doesn't he? 
or two yeah. Years. yeah and it's it's weird because it's like the same oh these dinosaurs or oh, you you will ruin the world but he's giving it to the people who actually work at yeah. the sanctuary it's so this I, I, I say it's standardization because like it's, it's, it's just like oh who is Malcolm? Malcolm is the guy who makes his big speeches, like it's this doomer attitude, and they just kind of write an overly complex, wordy piece. Okay, yeah, speech Th- there's, it. <laughs> there's like five seconds of him that I like. It's right after the speech when he's like giving autographs because that feels like what yeah, Ian Malcolm would true, do. Yeah, true, true, true. Like he's just, it's just such a simplification of his character was that his speech is barely. Co- it doesn't. It barely makes sense compared to the first one. Yeah. Yeah. It's and also a jumble why, of words. Like, like, did, did did he apply for this job at Biosyn specifically to sabotage them? No, or but did they just no, but the other character is the one who finds it out. Yeah, it's, it's the the second in command. Name, Raymond. No, but the whole reason Malcolm, like the whole reason Ellie is there, is because she says Malcolm wants her to find. Yeah, some. and Malcolm heard it from this other guy. So Malcolm ah, clearly so was it... already working there, ah, and then this other okay. guy is like, I can use Malcolm. This other guy doesn't get the sample himself. He clearly ha- most he almost he has the clearance to get the sample himself. He's the second in command function. Yeah, didn't think about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> he just, you're right. Oh, he just, well, he he's the even, only he guy. He doesn't even get Malcolm guy. in there. He gets Malcolm to get Ellie Sattler to get Alan to get Grant. Alan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, he's yeah, like He's like the only guy that Doshin trusts enough to like, continue the company with, and he somehow couldn't get the curve himself. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of... Yeah, oh god. <laughs> See, because in relation to the locusts, which we will probably talk about at some point... It's, it's our hope that... to make sure you guys stay here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're gonna get to hear me go off on one about the locusts. Yeah, because yeah. I, I thought that he, like, sabotaged that part to make sure that they would oh, no, set no. everything on fire. No, no, but he, he, when, when, when he reveals, like, because Alan and Ellie come out with a locust... DNA that they've gotten, and which we he, didn't see. He, because he, he rocks just up and is like, "Okay, down. where's the sample?" And he's like, "What? You know yeah. about it?" And he's like, "Yeah, I told Malcolm about it." Ah, yeah, okay. His name is Ramsey, not Ram- Ramsey. Raymond. Okay, Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Do we move on in the plot? I, because I don't know. What I mean, else... I mean, where we're currently at in the plot is like we just left Malta and Grant are having their wacky hijinks. Yeah, I guess we could go we to um, oh, everybody. Arrest... Fucking... Oh my god, no! That trust her after it falls into the ocean. Yeah, trust her. Oh, that's... okay. So, what I would say about that when the when the motorcycle hits that raptor and they fall into the air. I feel like the animator really wanted to put the raptor onto the bike. That's how that <laughs> felt to me. Like the way they both fall at the same time, the raptor's even like grabbing onto it or like trying to. It felt like they really wanted to have at least one frame where the raptor's on the bike. <laughs> oh god. That was again why uh... it's like the, the action sequences aren't even good, but also why do you insist on having these fast and the furious kind of set? pieces in a Jurassic Park movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. That that reminds me. That's another thing. With, yeah, a lot of the dinosaur scenes feel like, oh, you just write a Fast and Furious or, or a Mission Impossible scene and throw dinosaurs in. Like the black market, yeah. the black Chris market Pratt especially. fighting in the pit. Chris Pratt, like, actually fighting that was very Bond. in the pit. Very Bond, very okay, or oh, Bond. Yeah. I haven't seen Bond, but like in general, it feels like spy action movie yeah. stuff, but then also there's random dinosaurs there. So yeah. a lot of times you just have, oh, and then the bad guy releases a dinosaur onto them to kill them, but obviously the dinosaur fails because it's just an animal doing <laughs> random shit. Or then, oh, and then Chris Pratt uses a dinosaur to torture this guy, but it actually works because Chris Pratt is the protagonist, so the dinosaur does exactly what he expected him to do. Or get the information out. Yeah. Like that happens again when when they enter the sanctuary. Dodge is like, oh, turn off the 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 shock. Oh my god. Or yeah. like turn off the aerial stuff so they can because yeah, Dodge is going with, oh, let the dinosaurs kill them. Or let the pterosaur attack the plane, let the dinosaurs in the sanctuary kill them. Or then even when Alan and so on are in the hyperloop, he's like, turn off the loop and let the dinosaurs kill yeah. them. There's so many moments where oh yeah, again back at the Malta scene. They realize they release the atrocity of this because it's just like, oh, let the dinosaurs kill them. That's like so many times you have characters going as if that's like oh the most God. efficient way to get rid of someone. Thank you for bringing it up because, like we mentioned earlier, they had the fucking stupid ass laser pointer thing. 
but they also fucking have a dig at hybrids. Like, oh, you can't, you can't uh, engineer loyalty. You have to breed it or raise it or whatever. It's like, okay, so you're gonna make fun of the hybrids, but you're gonna keep the laser point the gun <laughs> that you have to shoot at people so that the raptors kill them. Yeah, yeah when like, they I'm also assuming... attack people way before they are pointed at with the laser point the gun because yeah, oh yeah, that's also I... pointed at until way into the chase. Yeah. And, and yeah, the Atrostoppers are just standing there waiting for somebody to point a laser somewhere. And even then, the Atrostoppers wait so the people have yeah. time to no. react and run away. Uh, I mean, even though they have guns and could shoot the Atrostoppers, but they don't. They run away with the guns in their hands. <laughs> Co correct me if I'm wrong here, Rick, but I, I do think when the Atrostoppers first appear, they do all get the lasers pointed at them. Y yes, yeah. but... They just get them they pointed at again. Them. Yeah, but Cla Claire, gets, them. Claire gets a... True, yeah, how the fuck does the raptor get to Claire? Um, yeah, that's the whole problem, like, they meet up with Claire later, the Claire yeah. has his fist fight, the cow and, 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 and the raptor randomly shows later. up in the hallway and runs at her, because I guess whatever the raptor was originally chasing because of the laser pointer is no longer around. The raptor yeah. just shows up and sees Claire, she tasers it, and then the evil chick gets out the laser pointer. Okay, yeah, that is... Yeah, but it still it makes no sense. So what yeah. happens after the raptor has killed the thing with the laser pointer? Does it just then fuck off, or does it <laughs> wait for another laser pointer? It can't know that because you can't just have that as the thing that motivates the raptors to do stuff. Just NPC waits in spot, slightly yeah. swaying it left and right. It despawns <laughs> and it only <laughs> <laughs> just despawns back into the cage. Yeah, like back when they have like Owen gets chased by two raptors. One raptor is like they're using the laser pointer. When he gets away, where does the second raptor come from? It just suddenly comes from around the corner. Where was that raptor before? Where was was it chasing? What was it doing before? Yep. Oh, and but yeah, that, yeah. that's an I interesting. Thought they were going to be a much bigger part of the plot, but they just yeah. disappear off the altar. Oh God. <laughs> Because oh. you we, you mentioned Quetzalcoatlus and the aerial defense system, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, what is the aerial defense system? i I'm assuming it <laughs> creates shocks that keep the animals from flying out of the of like a certain sp space. That's what I'm assuming it is. They don't really explain it. What's the aerial? De the f oh, okay. So the aerial defense system is for the dinosaurs. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming. Why are the protagonists? So, do the protagonists have to then enable the aerial defense system? I don't know. I, I, yeah, okay. At the end, yeah, I didn't understand. Do they what exactly enable they or to... disable it? They had to reboot something, and then just dis... <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand what happened at the end. What they had to Cause... enable or disable? Because what what they... I what I gathered was they wanted to disable it so that they could like. Get someone to fly them out. Where are they going, by the way? Because they lost their plane. Uh, the helicopter can take them. Okay, yeah, the yeah. Way. So they have the helicopter, but do they need to disable the aerial defense system to fly out or something? I, I really, I, I, oh, I, don't, I assume the defense system is like connected to the weird fucking microchip technology they have. I assume. I, it's weird. It's so weird. Like I think they show like a hologram or something, which the it, it's is like, a, like a, a dome, a, a wire net net dome. Yeah, yeah. This movie makes no sense. Yeah. Um. It's like, oh yeah, yeah we have the sprinkle scrunkle, and they never bother explaining what sprinkle scrunkle actually does. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, also you can have the sprinkle scrunkle Saurus, but you never say its name, and then when it does something important. People don't have the ecstasy after saying, oh, my favorite part was the Sprinkle Swankosaurus, because they don't even know what that thing's name was. And in a post-Indominus world, you kind of have to make sure people <laughs> understand that this is a real dinosaur that existed, and not another hybrid. I hate the fact yeah, that the past make seven sure years... Yeah, you gotta make sure is two dinosaurs <laughs> or three dinosaurs. Yeah. I hate the fact that we can say that the past seven years have been the post-Indominus world. And the fact, <laughs> the <laughs> fact that Indominus isn't in Dominion. Yeah, I was I, so sure I, that if they when they introduced the Giganotosaurus, I was I was like almost betting on it that there would be some line. Oh God, it's like the Indominus, and then like no, this is like the real deal. It's the pure genetic 
part on the Andromedus was only a hybrid of this, but they don't, they never say that. Again, this movie only works if you haven't seen or if you pretend Jurassic World doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so all our characters have ended up in the sanctuary one way or another. We've had our little side quests that don't go anywhere with Claire getting lost and then being unlost. The Dilophosaurus gets very... part of its frill ripped off or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, it happens. And then uh... and then the sample gets taken, and Dodson realizes the sample has been taken. And this is it, guys, this is the locust bit. So Dodson's like, yeah. hmm, how do I not get find out? He sees like a, a fucking news report on his phone or something, be like, these locusts, where did they come from? Where did they go? And where so... did it come from? Locusts go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so he's like, hmm, only one thing to do. V fucking burn them. So he has his like two hench people who press one and press button, and he said, and it's this extremely elaborate fucking immolation chamber inside the fucking containment pod that just slowly starts setting them all on fire. And then he leaves, and <laughs> and there is actually one line said here. I had to rewatch it to clock it. It's acid. It's uh, acid containment compromised. Is the line? How is it compromised? No clue. But whatever happens, the locusts burst through into a very convenient, very large vent, and the oh, fucking no. burning locusts fly out and set fire to the entire sanctuary. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? I did not know that they are that resilient to fire. Yeah. It's like, it <laughs> it's literally just a giant swarm of burning locusts, and it looks so dumb. It's, the visual is catastrophic. Like, what? But also, like, the logic. What? Yeah. How? Like, and I get, you know, chaos theory. You know, there's always going to be some small slip up that makes everything go wrong. You know, you hire There was the wrong no small guy. slip up set up. Like, yeah, they had and to... the small slip up is the setup for the plot. It's not the setup that resolves your plot. Because it doesn't do anything. As well, the forest being on fire as a result of the locust dying doesn't do anything other than just add a visual and get all yeah. the dinosaurs together so the dinosaurs can have their fight. That, again, does not affect the plot. From the moment the locust set fire, nothing happens to the plot as a result of it. Like, the locust could have all burnt up and that would have ended. It just wouldn't have looked dramatic. I mean, yeah, the, the only excuse is, oh, the burning forest also signals to Dodge Snow, this is done, I have to go now and get eaten by the Lophosaurus, so my character arc is complete. <laughs> but, what the f- yeah. It's, it's the most confu- no. <sighs> It's a bit like the Fallen Kingdom with the volcano, but at least the volcano actually does something. But again, it's, oh, we just want this cool visual, but we still have our dinosaurs do their scenes as if there wasn't a firewall approaching them. Volcanoes make sense, though. Like, volcanoes <laughs> are a thing that happen. Um, <laughs> do you remember the monkeys burning up in orbit? No! No, not the monkeys! <laughs> oh my god, the this locusts is... burn up in orbit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's the part where they're like driving through and this locust like lands on the hood of the car <laughs> on fire. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel like oh, they wanted a visual of some of raining fire to be like a meteorite or volcano, but they all they could come up <laughs> with is burning locusts <laughs> rain from the sky. It's 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 just like you know the fucking ten plagues of Egypt, but they just got confused. Yeah. Just had to say one yeah. time. Yeah, just get, get multiple in one. Yeah, it's plague of locusts, really but they're also on job. fire. You like know also, if they have... They also made frogs made of uh, made out of bloody water. I mean, they have frog <laughs> DNA. Yeah. <laughs> except for the morals. That one was 100% pure. And, they have... and except for Blue now, because she's monitor lizard. Yeah. I, she's yeah, not they, they frog never, DNA. They, didn't, they, they did not, yeah. You I see, mean, I... they, they switched out a species that can change sex into a species which doesn't even need to have sex to yeah. reproduce. Yeah. <laughs> I that, that's job these... died. If I ever remade like my own Jurassic Park, I would have gone with Monitor Lizard DNA from the beginning. Yeah, honestly. Because it feels more natural than frog DNA. I mean, yeah, I, I assume Python Genesis and Monsters was not known about. 
Oh, I don't know how long. In, I, in I the 90s? Like I'm not sure about the 90s, but now we do. We yeah. certainly did by 2014. Yeah. Genetic TV show. Also, so what genes is Beta made of then? So Beta is part raptor, part uh, monitor. monitor lizard. All Does blue. he have T-Rex DNA because Blue oh, had fuck. a T-Rex blood transfusion <laughs> in Fallen Kingdom? Does that translate? I don't know. That's true. Also, why did they bring Beta to Biosyn? They only needed Maisie. Like, why did they didn't need Beta's DNA? Yeah, they needed I think Maisie's because DNA. like it can reproduce person genetically. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> They, yeah, yeah, also, yeah, they completely forget about Beta for, like, one and a half hours of the movie, and then at the end, they're like, oh, wait, we have to get Beta while we're here. <laughs> like, Maisie lets Beta free because they leave Maisie unattended in the room, and then Beta oh just Oh my god, that was ridiculous, she just walks up to her and releases her. Yeah. Oh. And then Maisie manages to get away, and Beta gets away, but also it's completely forgotten until the end they're like, oh wait, we have to rescue the raptor because I made a promise. We almost <laughs> forgot about the raptors in our Jurassic World movie. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. Um, I guess, are we, at the cl are we talking about the fight yeah, now? Yeah, we'll go to the fight, because nothing happens between the local... Well, the Giganosaurus turns up, breeds fire, you know, usual stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, they defeat it by, they actually punch it and hit it with uh, electric I really like that yeah. though. I like that though, but I, I really I... wanted to see humans actually fend off against dinosaurs. And we, outside of Battle of Big Rock, we hadn't gotten yeah. that. Yeah, I, I like it, but like. It's a terrible setup the... for your villain. It's a god awful yeah. setup. Yes. Because I do not I root against that like, guy. It's realistic on the one on the other, it just feels silly when you, oh my god. Biggest He's, land corner, yeah. whatever. Like you punch it three times and go, oh yeah, oh fuck off. <laughs> yeah, the Giga is so pathetic. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, you gotta pick one though. Like, at least the the aloe got fucking shot with a crossbow <laughs> and Twice. not just slightly electrocuted. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I guess they hit it in the eye. Or they didn't electrocute it in the eyeball. It wasn't even the hit in the eye that made it go away. Yeah, but at the same time, the Giga was not deterred by a forest on fire. Yeah, it just eats the locust. Yeah, it eats. A, I mean, <laughs> oh. I like that. I because I guess it's just like a small crunchy thing at that point. <laughs> oh, kind of... oh! Speaking <laughs> of the Giga and fire, did you notice that that one trailer shot where you have Ian with the um, 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 flare and the Giga in the background? That shot is not in the movie. Uh, I remember there's like one trailer shot uh, where you have Ian in the foreground swinging the flare and you have the Giga like in full. But that scene is not in the movie because huh. Ian immediately throws the flare into its mouth. Oh, you mean you mean the stick? Yeah, the oh yeah, the stick. So the yeah, stick yeah. Way, oh it was actually a flaming locust that he impaled. Yeah. I <laughs> noticed that we watching that. <laughs> oh man, we kinda of forgot about the pyroraptor. Oh yeah. I, the pyro I, I mean I, it's such a nothing, nothing scene. Nothing happens. And... Yeah. Like in everything. I mean you hate it. You hate it, I think you hate it more than me. I I don't hate it. I just think it looks so fucking dark. Like yeah, I, it's it's uh, again like in principle you got a good idea, but you execute it so horribly that it looks so stupid. Yeah. And then it goes nowhere, like every scene in this damn movie. <laughs> and they never said its name, so your usual person will wonder why was that one raptor randomly feathered when every other raptor in this movie. Arguably, that's wasn't better feathered. though, because then they might end up thinking fire raptor is the only feathered raptor. Ah, uh, there's something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the the fight and and yeah, that's like again with like oh, this doesn't even feel like a movie. Like I know people can complain about the first Jurassic World and that one already made the animals like characters, but at least the final T Rex fight in the first Jurassic World it has build up yeah. and and like scenes and the the creature that gets the kill at the end of the first Jurassic World movie was set up throughout the movie. It showed up in the first act, got its like narration. It showed up in the second act as a reminder, and then at the third act you get the yep. payoff. But then the 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 killer in this one shows up one and a half hours into the movie, was never explained, was never name dropped, and then at the end when that's the one, it also just shows up. It's like oh, this one is also here, and I just guess it's standing there. 
It's just standing there. It's maybe blind. It doesn't even know what's in front of it. <laughs> it doesn't know what's going on. It's just slightly confused. <laughs> yeah. Why are my arms suddenly so heavy? <laughs> I feel so bad for the digger. Um, yeah. See, and it's really interesting also. The one big difference I noticed between this and the introduction of both Indominus and Indoraptor. Like, thinking Indoraptor versus Blue. Yeah. Is all of them introduce the antagonist first. This one, Rexy shows up first, does a whole shtick. And then just goes and beats the crap out of the Giga. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like the way you introduce Rexy, drawing cinematic parallels, you're like, oh, okay, the Giga's going to show up and save them. Which would have been yeah. so much more interesting, can I just say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine the, 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 the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved it. Just for the fact that T-Rex gets wrecked by Giga twice. Yes, yeah, exactly, because yeah. yeah, the follow guy is like, no. I would have, I would have, oh yeah, uh, they said the, pro, the prologue, so uh, Rexy yeah. gets a revenge against the original Giga, <laughs> and then he just gets killed again. <laughs> you cannot change your destiny. This is how your evolutionary line always went. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know. She's the instigator. She starts the fight. Yeah, also again, why are they fighting now? Why did they never fight inside the Sanctuary? Why do we have the T-Rex and the Giga and the Ferrisinosaur in the Sanctuary within walking distance of each other? Why are they only now fighting? Well, I mean, no, no it's because they all got, like, psychically let in, didn't they? Yeah, which then asks the question, if you have your dinosaurs psychically led to your Gotham uh, safe house, they're then just gonna kill each other anyway. Have, why no. do they still have enough free will to start a fight? Like that seems no, no, like see, a large. It, it, it's it's you clear. Had... Dodson clearly had like wired the other end of the implants into his brain, and he was single handedly controlling all the dinosaurs. And then he dies. He was already yeah. dead at that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and then yeah. he dies, and that's why they're free. <laughs> okay, then he, why was he, he is the brood the mother. That killed him? Dodson is the brood mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he is the hive queen. I mean, okay. Um, Speaking of Broodmother, I am happy they did not have a like big Broodmother locust. <laughs> like, imagine <laughs> for the song. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Did you join for Peacemaker? I did not. Oh, oh but then ah. you can't. Yeah. Come back a joke. Yeah, but I guess it's, it's 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 just the cow from Peacemaker. Yeah. Look it up later. You'll thank me. No, nah, no, that thing looks hideous. Do not look it up. <laughs> look it up. Okay, I need to get back to Peacemaker then. Yeah. But yeah, that whole final fight, it just, yeah, I wrote down this movie's passionless. Because like with the first one, the way the T-Rex is introduced it in the fight, and you have the dramatic pause when the Indominus temporarily beats it, and you have sad music, but in this one, it's just, it's just the same thing, but worse. And it felt like, oh, the only reason the helicopter is there is so they can have the, the, the light of the helicopter go <laughs> so around to make see it... see what's going on. To, yeah, to make the movie feel more exciting. And I <laughs> and to have that one shot of the helicopter um, um, shine onto the T-Rex eye. Oh my god, that's oh, man. Right. It's just... Out, this entire scene, like... I will... Uh, Jurassic World's Final Fight had problems because it was so float, but at least, you know... Indominus was an active antagonist. It could yeah. argue she was actually evil. Giga does nothing. We are introduced to Giga being asleep. Then they it they reuse the fight animation for the prologue when they have the sword clash over the deer. In which case, you know, she didn't even act over the aggressor. She was like, "Oh yeah, that's that's mine. I'm the top alpha predator." Yeah. And then it's just now we are meant to root again. It never did anything evil. Yeah, I'm sorry. Rexy did worse stuff when she was in Jurassic Park, because you know Rexy actually killed people. Yeah, yeah. She, Rexy hasn't killed a person since Jurassic. Oh wait, in in Fallen Fall Kingdom, Kingdom, she killed she killed the bad guy at the end, so that's okay. But yeah. Well. Oh man, but yeah, it just it's so shoved in. Like you have no you have no investment. Because it's not evil. It's just a random dinosaur we saw three times that never did something exceptionally bad. Yeah. The entire the prologue pro was cut from the movie or never included in the movie. Yeah. So that bit is just purely optional. Thank <laughs> you. Um, and just know, oh, yeah, now they fight. Yeah. And then they kill it with this fairy, which just 
fucking materialized out of nowhere <laughs> for some yeah. reason. So, oh my god, the the T Rex one. Why should I care though? So the also, gig- did, I just feel did bad the, for the Giga. Yeah. Did the T Rex know what was gonna happen? Like, did it push the it does, yeah. Giga on purpose into the spine? I'd into assume the no. I'd like to think no. <laughs> But you don't know that. You don't know if the... <laughs> That's why I'm comparing this to, like, Spangled Centaurosaurus, because it feels like a calculated move. <laughs> like a finisher in wrestling. Yeah, Fucking it's like, okay, w- w- what if one Eye and Slash from Dino King Journey to Fire Mountain bear the same character? And then it teams... It, 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 like an evil Ferrisinosaur with a blind eye. Yeah. And then it teams up... With a T Rex against a spiky ferroport, but not Tarbosaurus, but Giganotosaurus. And the T Rex knows how to make, how to use the Ferrocinosaurus claws to its advantage. No, there's that. No, I, I, I'd be no. I'm, I'm like seventy five percent sure that's not what happens. I wish I was. <laughs> that's not a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but also, yeah, that reminds me, yeah, the, the climax is also so uncreative because, yeah, most of the fight is just like T Rex versus Indominus. And then the way the Giga gets killed is just like the Indoraptor getting impaled by something. Like, they couldn't even come up with a new way to kill it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I remember, like, remember when in the first act, when you have Grant seeing the Dreadnoughtus and they even mention, oh, Dreadnoughtus means fear nothing. I, I was... felt like, oh, that's my setup for something. I, it would have but... been so cool if the Genonis was the one to come in and finish it off. Like, that would yeah. have actually paid off, because like, you get that shot at the beginning. Yeah. Either replace the Dreadnoughtus scene, the first one, with the Fairy Xenosaur to set up, oh, we have this Fairy Xenosaur. No, but then you have to say, this is Fairy Xenosaur, so it means turtle lizard. <laughs> <laughs> no, it means scythe lizard. Oh, scythe, okay. For... Yeah, true. The Kill species the name is... Yes, fine. No, 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 you say, this is Fairy Xenosaur, he's got my back, his <laughs> blades can cut you in half. <laughs> I put that my nice <laughs> I advise not to get killed by it, as it's claws traps the spirits of our victims. Yeah. It's claws trap the genetic information of its victims. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we've oh. gone through the whole movie. Yeah. I, I don't think you can fix that entire fight without rewriting it entirely, because yeah, there's agree, so little yeah. investment. I really, why would I care about the Giga dying? Except it's- Okay, the only people who get something out of the Giga dying are those T-Rex fanboys. You can't handle the fact that there might be something else that dominates the T-Rex. Like yeah. even when they when they enter the goddamn fucking century, like oh, um, we got the T-Rex three days ago. Uh, the Giga is like the top predator, but who knows how long that's gonna last now? But well, something like that happened. Like oh my god, they're literally just trying to get the um, T-Rex fanboys to just yeah. lose their mind. That's all there is to it. And I'm so tired of Rexy. Yeah. You, uh, a prehistoric planet proves you can do T-Rex interestingly. But like, <laughs> she, Rexy just shows up, does something fan yeah. and then stops mattering for like the next hour. Shows I up, kills villain, could... refuses to elaborate, leaves. Yeah. I thought we could maybe go the whole discussion before bringing a prehistoric planet. <laughs> Yeah. Because, like, it's see, it's not even about accuracy. It's just pre-circled visually and creatively. It's so refreshing. Yeah. And Dominion is like, oh, it's things we've seen before. Because even the part that I would expect to be new, the dinosaurs everywhere, that's mostly off-screen. And then it's back to dinosaurs in an enclosed thing. Person wants to use dinosaurs for evil things. Uh, Rexy fights another giant ferroport, and then another dinosaur helps her kill it. Yeah. Can you help? It, yeah. Like I said at the beginning, Jurassic World criticism isn't really about the designs, even if so many people latch onto it. It's just mediocre to bad in execution. It's terribly paced. This plot is nonsensical at times. And like, yeah. there's so little involvement you actually have unless you are just a consumer. I appreciate that there are feathered dinosaurs in this. I just hope when this gets negative reviews, that Universal doesn't somehow think the feathered dinosaurs are yeah. the problem. Like, oh, man. So yeah, was the final fight. Uh, Dodge fucking dies in the hyperloop. Thanks, Elon Musk. 
Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of Elon Musk with the Hyperloop. I was, I was, I was thinking still on Godzilla vs. Kong with the underground train. I oh, expected them right to come out in China or something. I completely forgot about that part in Godzilla vs. Kong where they go from like Florida to China Hong Kong, in yeah. the Hyperloop. <laughs> I mean, we did tell everyone Hyperloop's a death trap, didn't listen. <laughs> but well, one Dilophosaurus gets in and everyone's fucked. Who could have guessed? Fancy yeah, but then not. three Dilophosaurus have to <laughs> yeah. get in, so to make it even better for Dilo fans. No, it's so that they have an excuse to swing the camera around and not actually animate a Dilophosaurus. Yeah. Oh yeah, and also when the Dilophosaurus like spits him in and thought, oh well at least he has the glasses and at least he can like temporarily fight it off, but then in one shot they're just gone. Like he just drops the glasses while some something is spitting at him. Ah Jesus. <laughs> or even his last line, what's your story? That felt like Oh yeah, oh god, I didn't even mention yeah, some of the like meta comments. Like what's your story feels like a comment directly about yeah. oh the story of the Dilophosaurus is that the fans finally have it back. Oh yeah, Ian at one point says Jurassic World is not a fan. That feels like specifically for people like us to be like, ah, see, we acknowledge that this movie is not good, so now you can't criticize it. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to point out, by the way, that all this criticism is just leveled at the film. I bear no ill will towards people who might enjoy the film. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I don't want to go with the whole "oh, you just consume product." If if you if you like the film, if you enjoy the film, good for you. If you think the film is beautiful and innovative, good for you. No. Anyways, legal disclaimer yeah. out of the way. Let's go back. Uh, no. Uh... Good thing to do the legal disclaimer after two hours of renting. It's it's fine. I'll oh. I'll add this at the beginning. I'll edit yeah. this in at the start. Edit this in before the part where you fucked up the recording. What? I did no such thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you're right. no, he will never. But um, yeah, Ellie and Grant kiss because of course they do again. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's also, yeah, it re makes you realize Jurassic Park was pretty good because you can buy Ellie and Grant a uh, couple, but they don't need to actually kiss. But for this one, they were like, but they, they gotta kiss. We have to have the, the kiss at the end. No. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the, the movie ends the way it opens, where you, some of the scenes, it doesn't it's... matter whether it's... Like, the whole movie was pointless. Yeah, because I remember, oh, the, obviously, oh, this is the epic conclusion of the Jurassic World trilogy. Where will they go next? The, the next movie can just do the exact same thing as this one. Yeah, they can, can just... Do nothing. Yeah, you can just have another person sabotaging the UN sanctuary or wherever the dinosaurs are at the end, and the whole thing starts again. The evil black market chick is maybe still around. Or, or at least there's probably other black markets in the world. You can just do this exact same movie again because that's how little change there was. Yep. Malta is just yeah. fucked now, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, this is fucking... just to set up the Camp Cretaceous spin off where it's just uh, uh, surviving in <laughs> dinosaur infested Malta. Yeah, just Camp Malta. <laughs> Camp Malta. <laughs> You're going to Malta. <laughs> no! <laughs> Several years in the yeah, future, Malta has become new Alcatraz. They just send prisoners yes. there. It's the Jurassic Games all over. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, 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 would, I would watch the Ju Jurassic Games could exist now in this universe. <laughs> Instead of holograms, it can be actual dinosaurs. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that was, I don't, I haven't seen anything that I haven't mentioned yet. On my like list that I made of things mm. I liked, things I disliked. Where the only thing I liked oh. was the concept of a scary, aggressive herbivore. Yeah. Uh, the Spinosaurus fake out. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You see, when I actually I saw that scene, I thought, oh god, they actually have the spinal. Before I remembered, oh wait, no, they have. Uh, we all did it, that for a moment. Yeah, it yeah. only works if you just didn't pay attention. Yeah, like, you can't reveal the matter oh, is in the movie. Oh, think, see, yeah, oh. oh god, that, that brings me to another line I hated because right before that, they, yeah, they asked like, oh, like the, uh, Ian asks, are there dinosaurs down there in the mines? And I thought this was the perfect setup to go like, well, they're not technically dinosaurs, but 
But instead, they have the obligatory well, birds are dinosaurs line, which makes no sense because there are no birds down in the mines. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Canaries are famous for surviving in mines. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. They should have a swarm of canaries down in the mines. Genetically engineered canaries to survive the... <laughs> to survive to, to, in whatever. poison. Are you sure that whole sanctuary is so uh, badly secured that everything yeah. is everywhere? You got Dimetron di in the mines, you got Pyroraptor on the dam outside the sanctuary. Yeah, can the Pyroraptor not just escape? <laughs> just yeah. break... The dam is not part of the sanctuary, it's outside. Why the didn't the alternative, outside? the one thing I'm thinking is if they took down the aerial defense system and it does control the dinosaurs, that's how the Pyroraptor got up there. But it what? was already out. No, because they've already disabled it to let the plane go down. Cause if like it, five okay. minutes earlier. Yeah. So the Pyroraptor climbed up a mountain in yeah. the, like five exactly. minutes. Exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. Or it took the lift, you never know. It, yeah, oh it took God. the lift. It just swam up. Bloody, the plane had only had a parachute <gasps> on like the, oh the second passenger seat. <laughs> we have one ejector she, seat. Hmm. She did say that she wasn't expecting to have other okay, people. Okay, so wait, is the, the the wait, 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 is the implication she gets out her pilot seat, swaps seats, and then ejects the seat? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, because I thought the oh, line yeah. was, I only have one ejector seat. It's like, do you have parachutes? No. I only have one. Ah, uh, but okay, yeah. Even either way you interpret it, <laughs> the captain goes down with his ship. <laughs> this applies to pilots as well. Yeah, uh. I don't know if there's anything to talk about. Yeah, with the catsagratus of the plane, obviously the catsagratus changes sizes. But it's I've, way I've, too large for the plane. For the World Trade Center, it's even larger apparently <laughs> in comparison. But then in the final shot, where it's with the birds, it's like normal size. I've got to say though, like watching the scene, because I had no clue what the aerial defense system was. I interpreted it as the fucking Quetzalcoatlus is the aerial defense system. <laughs> <laughs> just one. <laughs> Which is why it, because it does, it just hits the engines and flies off. Ah, I don't know. I interpreted it as the air defense systems for the dinosaurs, that, that and it's does like using sense. shocks to keep them out. That would yeah. make but still, yet yeah, the Quetzalcoatlus was there instantly. <laughs> just takes out the engines, refuses to elaborate. All of the dinosaurs just do something, refuse to elaborate, and leave. Yeah, all of them. The Ferrocinosaurus entire segment for that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at least when Claire's, like, with the parachute and the small Tyranodon's attack, I felt, oh, that could have been a setup to have the Quetzalcoatlus safer in, in like, catching another Tyranodon mm. to, again, also show how much bigger it is oh, in comparison. Oh, that would have been nice. Well. Everything that was not in this movie would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really, I, I can't see anything good in this film. I just, I yeah. don't see i'm happy for fans that yeah. just want yeah it's it's a lot of oh i want this dinosaur to be in the dinosaur is in it doesn't matter what it actually does but it's in so i like it no, i mean i'm sure i'm sure there are people who do find some genuine enjoyment in like yeah the story i want to see how see giga it. fans react after this comes out if they will still be yeah giga fans, it, if the giga fans will be disappointed it's, it's weird recording a podcast having you know Chickened out and seen it earlier than <laughs> most. Yeah, right now as we're recording this, I think the Rotten Tomatoes is still positive because it's only like nine reviews. Yep. But that's going to I, plumb. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay. The best part is, I think like 90% of the good reviews are all from Latin America. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the only place it's out, officially. In South Korea. So okay. it's kind of fitting for me to watch it like as a South Korean dinosaur movie for the Ferris and the <laughs> and the Spiky Film. Oh my god. It all circles back around. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I don't need to make a video now. I can just make like an announcement to have people watch this podcast. Yeah, I did not, that this. Yeah. yeah. I did not want yeah, I did not want to like talk with my You didn't want to get flack to... on your podcast. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> on my one person. You're letting you're letting us take the fall for the flashback. Fine. I will download your podcast, remove all of your lines, and just have it be me again. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's fine. I did half the job for you by removing me from the opening. So yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> okay, we got reviews from Screen Anarchy, which I assume is, I don't know, American or something. Costa Rica, Argentina, um, South China Morning Post, which okay. is the only okay. button to review. So uh, far. Hmm. Oh, if this move, if even the Chinese don't like this movie, that is just. I mean, to be fair, it's it's a white guy called James Marsh, so. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, well yeah, that's one point I wrote on. Like, obviously, when this gets negative reviews, the fans will again defend, or like the hardcore fans will be like, "Oh, you should never listen to critics. They just don't understand what makes this movie good. They shouldn't expect like an Oscar-winning movie, you know, like the first Jurassic yeah. Park, which won Oscars." Yeah. And it's like it's not even just yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home or Top Gun, which is out right now. Those are like movies that have fan service but still manage to be good movies on their own. Yeah. That are structured like movies and have scenes like movies that are not just a series of things. It's not even like no... in terms of structure, you don't even need to go like three act structure. You don't because this film technically has a three act structure. It just has nothing other than the conceptual three acts. It's no scenes lead into each other. Like yeah. there, there's I think three scenes. That is so few, like especially the second and third acts are just it's a clip show. Um, and the first this, act is everything, including Malta, and then the yeah. second act is when they are at the sanctuary, and the third act is when the locusts are on fire. Yes. Or is that how would you? Okay. Um. No, I would structure. No, no, no. I would structure the first act being up until they all leave to Malta because technically in screenwriting, what you do is first act ends when the inciting incident hits in, and the inciting incident is the theft of. Oh, I thought the inciting no. incident is still part of the first no, no, act. No, no, it's the end of the first act. The, well, okay. the end of the first act is the, the call to arms, I suppose. It's when it's, it's okay. the, the accept, acceptance of the cha challenge. It's okay. very flexible how you define it. And the end of the second act is the point of... See, it doesn't even happen in this film. Because technically the point of the second act is all seems lost. At yeah, no point like... in this film does all seem lost. <laughs> Everything goes swimmingly for the most part. It's just little bits of yeah. tension. Yeah, you can, because, like, if you want to say, oh, in the first act, uh, and the second act is once they are, oh, wait, no. The first act is before Malta. Then Malta is second act. How much of the sanctuary part is first I, I would say you'd have to end the second act once the plane crashes, because that's when uh, you get the, the highest to, stakes. Or, uh, wow. That's and like, then okay, you just have an ungodly, because there's no... Yeah. From the moment the plane crashes, it's a full hour. <laughs> from the moment the plane crashes to when they get out, yeah. the, the 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 stakes they face only consistently decrease. Yeah. And the end of your second act is the point when you are like at the approach to the inmost cave, is what it's called. Bullshit title, by the way. But the the official yeah, but... term is approach to the inmost cave, and it's it's when you're approaching sort of the darkest hurdle in your challenge. So it's like um I think. I think it's Escape from the Death Star in Star Wars is the side example. When oh, Obi-Wan yeah. dies. I mean, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's analogously, yeah. Like and then everything, yeah, because I mean, Star Wars is one of the most offside examples because it follows the three acts with like 12 smaller beats perfectly. Yeah. Um, this film, I, I would say, yeah, the, the moment of the stakes plane being crash. lost the most is the plane crash when they get separated because that's when everyone gets like, separated. Yeah. yeah. This but is thing, one and oh, a half hours into a two and a half hour movie. Yes. Your, your third act is one hour long and just has a series of scenes. Traditionally, the third act is also the shortest act often. Because, yeah. you, well, I, I'd argue perhaps in Tiny Instant, the second act should be the longest act. Yeah. Because that, it's, that's why it's two fourths of the film. <laughs> just out of the length, the third act would have to be something way later when they are already in the sanctuary and for something with the locust goes wrong, I guess. But Nothing yeah, goes never wrong the with the locust. Because, like, the fire, if the fire posed a danger, then you can say things have gone wrong. The fire never poses a danger to anyone. It rains, like, two locusts onto their car, and then they fall over with the car. Yeah, and then the Giga turns up, doesn't really do much, and it doesn't advance the plot. Nothing changes as a result of that scene. Yeah, and not, none of that, none of that is actually intrinsically tied to the fire. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Plane crash is the moment of highest stakes in this film. Yeah. And that's the... <laughs> that means that the Ferrisinosaurus gets introduced in the third act to Yes, get yes, it does! <laughs> it does! <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. 
so yeah, outside of the locust DNA thing, which apparently works in real life, we haven't found a single actually good thing or intelligent thing in this movie now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I suppose one could one can't even argue that saving Beta is part of the third act because that's just forgotten about. No, yeah. I mean you can't argue that that's the point of highest tension because it really isn't. No. I, I suppose you could try and spin it like, you know, oh, it's all the characters have to go and save. But I'd argue there's no payoff. It's not the main plot line. The main plot line yeah. is saving the Locusts, and that's why... And not the saving Lazy, uh, Maisie. Saving, the Ma saving Maisie and yeah. also getting the Locust sample and Beta is all, it's like my Beta is number also, three. Yeah. So, yeah, in terms of saving Maisie and solving the Locusts, the plane crash combined with, I guess, the... Uh, Sam and El Sam and Ellie, no. <laughs> Sam Elliot. Sam Elliot, and Ellie Sadler. That just gets even harder. Uh, <laughs> it, it, when they're entering the literal inmost cave of the Locust, that's their point of highest tension as well. Yeah. And they happen at roughly the same time. Maybe they don't have to happen at the same time in all the plots, but respectively, those are the the ends of the second act. Or maybe if Ian actually sacrificed himself during the Giga scene with his burning locust, that could have been the lowest point, even though uh, the fire's already going on at that point, so that's a bit late for a third it's act. Only, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess like a feel for, for Team Allen, I'm just going literally with the Team Godzilla, Team Kong thing. Yeah. For Team Allen, the lowest point would have been maybe in the mines when the Dimetrodons are almost getting them because that's the closest to danger they are getting okay. before. Okay, so my act technically approach to Inmost Cave is the halfway point of the film. It's it's weird. I This is the part I disagree yeah. about with three-act structure. Is It's so inconsistent because in some points... The climax of Act 3 is the start of the three-act structure. It's function where you started. Yeah. But again, that's like... Because climax is release of tension. So you yeah. either... You have this really awkward second half of the... You either have a really awkward second half of the second act that stretches from plane crash to... What is the climax of this film? Burning locusts? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's the road back. Yeah. So I suppose that kind of works. It's just not very good. Yeah. Cuz yeah cuz then yeah no cuz then you have the road back and then you have to double back for beta. Oh, I thought road back would just be the ending conclusion the the where are they now part. No, ro ro road back base oh my because the whole idea of the 12 act 12 12 part three act structure 12 is, is a bit too much. No, that is like the official. I've read it's a 450 page book. It's god awful. But oh <laughs> uh, yeah. It's very long. Yeah. Okay. But it does like, apply to everyone. Basically, it's you have to go and get something and return. Yeah. It can be an eternal achievement or something like that. And that's the structure of every story. You go out, okay, get yeah, something, yeah. and either return to the eternal world and either stay or leave. Yeah. So they go out to get Maisie and... and They go Beta out to get Maisie and, and Beta and the sample. <laughs> and there's two different teams doing this. And I kind of don't want to afford this any more deconstruction than that. Because I think it's just inherently flawed from that point. Yeah. So you've got three different three act structures in twelve beats, roughly. That makes a nine act structure. A nine act structure with thirty six beats. Yeah. <laughs> Math checks out. Yeah. So yeah, uh, go watch Prehistoric Planet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna call it here. We went on for an hour and a half, so yeah, that's the length this movie should have been without like half the shit that happens. We went on for perfect Morbius length, though, so go watch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's we, more than time. We did indeed morb all over Jurassic World Dominion. So <laughs> yes, we Dominion. Ah, oh, that doesn't work. Morbinion. We Dominions. Jurassic yeah, I feel World. if you shorten that to one syllable, though, it really doesn't work. We dumped? Yeah. <laughs> we dumped, dumped? Yeah. Yeah, we dumped all over Dominion. Yeah. Um, Christ. <laughs> so, thank you guys for listening. We hope there was this was interesting. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah. Be civil. 
Yeah. About people. We try to be civil. Not about the film. I think it's perfectly fair to be critical of film and be vocal in that regard. Just bear in mind, obviously, people's feelings and all that. Yeah. And never attack people directly, ever. Look, yeah. if you go into people's comments being, oh, ooh, you're stupid for liking Jurassic World, yeah. then you're just a fucking asshole. Yeah. Yeah. And you deserve whatever co- whatever is coming to you. Yeah. yeah. But all opinions, welcome, and take care. Yeah. And Form your own opinion yes, about Dominion. of course. Even rhymes. Like poetry. Yeah. Screw you, Rick. So, now I have to edit together this clusterfuck of recording, but it'll probably be a better editing job than editing Jurassic World Dominion, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Did you stop or are you still recording? I'm actually still recording. Oh, okay. But you're not leaving any of this in. Well, the more you discuss about whether or not this will make it into the, 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 the recording, the likelier. Ah. Uh, yeah, just because I don't know what would be like the perfect way to end this video.